Welcome to lockdown video number, I've no idea what number it is, I don't even know what day it is if I'm honest. Um, today, short, sharp video, none of my fancy B-roll type stuff. We're going to be looking at escaping the system and this gets quite technical, so this is part one. There's going to be a few progressive parts to it. Part one, in-reach anchors escaping the system. So it's techie, I've worn a technical fleece to prove the point, right? Give me a minute to set up and then we're going to crack on with it, okay? I'm going to do a few parts to it all and you'll see they kind of get progressively a bit trickier and a bit trickier. But this is the fundamental building blocks to it. So each part will sort of build on the previous ones and put them all together uh, into, into things quite complicated. And what we need to do to get a good toolbox of, of these skills is learn the individual building blocks and then be able to put them together in the right order. Okay, that's, the, that's actually the tricky bit is, is working out what to do and when to do it. So with our first setup, I've used a sling to equalise two points. I'm attached via a clove hitch. Uh, I've got my mate on belay as usual okay so nothing exciting going on there at this point i was going to take that tight we're going to imagine right that they have fallen off um and they need my help to get to them with this setup this isn't like an instructor friendly setup or anything this is just what you'd normally have set up when you're climbing right so we can't just unclip and run away like we would be able to with like a top rope setup here we're part of the system so the first thing is going to be, in common with most of these things, is going hands-free first. So obviously I can't just let go because my mate could be dangling on that or whatever. And uh, so I need to tie off the belay plate. Okay, so tying off the belay plate, we're going to put a little loop through the carabiner and a little loop through that. That's called a slippery hitch. And then we're going to make that loop bigger. All right. Obviously, when this is under load properly and not just tied around my chair, uh, you're going to have to you know, try really hard not to let any slip through because it's, it's, um, it's a slippery little thing to start with. We're then going to do a half hitch, which is pushing a bite through the carabiner and then through itself. If you can fit a second one in, a second half hitch, I like to. All right, if you can't, you can't. There we go. Right, so at this point, I've bought myself a bit of breathing space. Yeah, hands free. What have I got to do to be able to go and give them some help? Okay, well, I can't just untie because this is all weighted and stuff. So somehow I've got to take the weight off me and all this lot and put it straight onto the anchors up here, those in reach anchors in this case. Okay, so the first step is going to be getting a prussic out, which I always have on me. Uh, find one of them and we're going to do a French Prusik around the live strand of rope that's got my mate on it, right? French Prusik or an auto block, same thing. And what that means is plenty of wraps. It's quite a shiny Prusik and a shiny skinny rope, this one. So I'm going to give loads of wraps and test it. Just give it a pull, see if it locks up. Five, six wraps, something like that. You'll have to just have a practice. So I'll try that one and see if it locks up. That's locking up, so that's all good. Screw gate ideally, now you might run out of screw gates doing all this kind of stuff. Um, so we just have to use a bit of judgment, right? So I'm gonna put a screw gate on there and I'm just gonna keep hold of it because sometimes when you let go of this, it, when it's not underweight, it does just slide down. So I'm gonna keep hold of it, get myself a sling, clip that into there because it is a screw gate. I'm gonna do him up, okay? And then I need to clip this back to my anchors, right? And you know, I want it to go into a strong point, so either the power point or onto the shelf. I kind of like the shelf because it keeps things a bit clearer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a little knot into here just to shorten it a little bit. This is kind of the improvisation side of it. Uh, something like that. 
get myself another screw gate and that's going to go into this shelf that I talked about. Okay, so squeeze that up there. A bit fiddly sometimes when it's all properly underweight with your mate hanging down there. And now push that prusik away so it's all locking up nicely. Okay, doing its thing, all right? A bit harder, Ken, when I say it's on the, on the bench, but that's now doing something. So what I can think about now is taking the pressure off this because basically this forms a bypass to all this lot going on here. Here, I'm going to preempt not being on just this prusik. We don't really like that. So what I'm going to do is put this screw gate up into our PowerPoint. It wants to be a screw gate, this one. In an ideal world, this would be an HMS, but I haven't got any HMSs left on me, so hey ho. I'm going to take the braking side of this ATC tie off, put an Italian hitch in it. Italian hitch, because it's releasable and adjustable. Okay. I'm not tying it off yet, but I will be in a minute. Okay. So the next step is that's going to be my new belay, basically my new uh, belay device. So I'm looking now. Bypassed, good. Tied off and safe, good. Italian hitch into there, me holding on to it. I don't want to let go of that one now. I'm now going to release this, all right? So I just reverse what I did before. I take off my uh, first half hitch. I'm pretty bulletproof at this point. Now I really need to switch on. I'm going to grab the whole device with just a big strong grip around the whole thing, right? Get rid of my other half hitch, and then you're left with your slippery hitch, okay? Pop that out. So I'm still on belay as well, and I'm on belay twice. I'm just going to pull that Italian hitch through a bit. Not super tight, because I'll need to take this off in a second. Prusik's gripping. I've got all this. We're good now to let that go a bit slack. Okay, check the Prusik's locking. It is. We're good. Take off the ATC, the original belay device. Pop him out. Okay, good. Prusik's doing its thing. I can now tighten up this Italian hitch. Okay, good, a bit tighter, there we go. Now I'm gonna tie this off, which is very similar to how I tied off the ATC. We form a little loop through a little loop. Okay, pull plenty through, I'd rather have too much than not enough. Get it all snugged up. And then we're gonna do a half hitch again, which is that. One more, because why not? Okay, super solid. Nice and neat and all snugged up there. So that's now a solid point. So I'm not really relying on this Prusik anymore. I mentioned it has to be a French Prusik or an auto block because they release under load. That's the key, okay? So we now carefully get this and pull it. And you might have to pull it quite hard. And this is gonna take the weight. There we go. Winning. This has now gone floppy. That is no longer doing anything. So get all your kit back while you can. One, because you might need it to do other stuff in a second too because it neatens it all up and you can really just be nice and thorough and check everything and that's key because there's a lot going on here and remember this is like the, the most simple version of it so you know we're going to progressively build up in the other videos to slightly more complicated stuff so what else can I win back I can get this sling back out the way can't I because again might need that now what can I do from here well I mean that's another video really but basically to watch that I'm going to untie in a second I don't want that to fall off down the cliff so that's a good thing to clear up as well so by being thorough at this stage each time it doesn't take long but it, it makes your life easier okay and it stops you doing something potentially silly get that out of the way oh there we go so I'm not actually not under tension anymore so that's cool I could untie from that if I'm going to untie from that get that sling I haven't got a lanyard on me so I'm going to improvise a lanyard all right 
Lark's foot, I'll probably put a knot in that. Okay, just so I can adjust it if I need to in a minute. Get myself a screw gate because this is a single sort of point. And I could go into there actually to keep it neat and tidy. I'll go up to there. I would adjust this now to make it snug uh, because, well, I may as well do it actually, might not. Um, I just, yeah, we don't want to be on loose slings, okay? That's really key. So I may as well do it for the sake of completion. There we go, into that, do him up. So now I can get myself out of that original knot. Okay. Right, so I'm completely out of the system now and I can start to think about what I'm gonna do with it. Like I say, that's for another video, but it's probably gonna be abseiling down to them to give them first aid to help them out however is needed, all right? But I can now do that, which is ace. I've said this setup is for in-reach anchors, okay? So I could do all exactly what I did. In-reach anchors sometimes mean you've used the rope to set up, and that's okay, right? It doesn't really add much more complication. Right, so this time you're back with me and I've set the same belay up, right? And I've got the same problem. My friend has fallen off. I'm gonna have to go and give them some help for whatever reason. I'll put them back on belay so we're, we're at that point. Okay, so let's see if you can work out what I'm gonna do each time. First thing then, all right, they've fallen off. I take it in tight because it probably would be anyway. Notice how the back bar of the carabiner is facing up. That makes my life easier for tying it off, which is the next step, isn't it? So carefully, little loop, little loop, turn it into a big loop. Okay, half hitch. So loop through the carabiner, trapping all the strands of rope. And again, trapping the, that strand of rope so that's two half hitches, nice and neat with a grabbable loop. So I'm back where I was before, mate dangling off, but this time the rope's here. So what I've got to do now is replace that and hopefully it's all within reach. Because remember, this is all under weight, so this would be quite tricky, which is what's happening here. Okay, so that's a snap gate in there. I'm gonna have to improvise, I just haven't got enough screw gates to do everything with a screw gate. Okay, so use a bit of judgment there. Get that knot, uh, sorry, the join in the sling out of the way. And what else have I got? Well, I've probably got enough screw gates, I think, to have a screw gate on one of those bits. That's always nice, if you can. Uh, if you can, like, gravity load it, I suppose we should, just to be, like, spot on, to spin that round. Equalise that the same as you would normally. Okay, great. We're back at this point now, so we've got something useful I'm gonna put. A, where's my, I'm going to just put a carabiner in there in readiness for the sling in a second. Okay, keep that over the top just so it's all clear. Leave that there. Right, next step then is bypassing this lot again. So it's not really any different, is it? Next is going to be putting the prusik on. Remember, French prusik to enable it to be released under load. Remember, slow and steady, no rush. Keep working towards that end goal. Keep thinking one step ahead. Check your locks before anything else. It's locking, great. Have I got enough screw gates? Well, probably not actually. I'm gonna need a screw gate for the Italian hitch in a minute, so I'm gonna put that there. So what else have I got? I've got a snap gate and I've got another snap gate. It's gonna to have to be a snap gate. That's okay, just be aware of it, okay. Right, that's in. Get him over my head just to keep things neat and tidy. Right, so this is a bit too slack. So what we're gonna do there, well, we're gonna shorten it a little bit. And what did I do last time? I put it actually up there, didn't I? So that might be a nice idea for this one as well. I think it'll still need shortening a touch. Only a little bit though. You can get that out of there. Put him in, put him in go up to that is there enough space yeah just about enough space to go onto that great into the shelf just to keep it nice and neat keep things separated a little bit that's on push it away so it's taking the strain great what was next well remember i wanted an hms on there really but 
it doesn't matter too much. Uh, Italian hitch. There we go, in. And you can take in a little bit, but not a lot yet because we're gonna to have to do something here in a second. So I've got my back up ready, it's not doing anything yet. Sling is doing all its thing with the prosic on the end. So I'm now in a position to transfer all the weight onto there, aren't I? Okay, so that is carefully keeping hold of that Italian hitch side as well. Get rid of the first half hitch, second half hitch, really switched on by this point. Grab the whole thing like that, properly grip it, grip it, flip in tight, especially skinny rope this one and quite shiny as well. So pay attention. Okay, release that a little bit. The sling's gonna take the strain. So really carefully check it is taking the strain, right? It is good, it's not slipping or anything. If it's slipping, I've got to go back a few steps. Uh, I just neaten up that Italian hitch. There we go. Not too tight yet because I'm gonna take this off. Keep checking that, that prosthetic's not slipping. Oops. Pop him out. Great, prosthetic's doing his thing. And I've got it on back up with this Italian hitch. So I'm just gonna adjust the Italian hitch. Do you remember what's next? Well, I need to take my hands off that Italian hitch. So that means tying it off. Slippery hitch. Half hitch. Another half hitch. Solid. Okay, great. I've got this out, so remember trying to keep things neat and tidy as much as possible. He says, getting a tangle, there we go. Get that out of the way. All the weight's onto this new sling anchor now, isn't it? Brilliant. My belay's only looking after me now. So let's release this. Remember, we have to pull quite hard on that uh, auto block, French prosthetic. All the weight is now on that Italian hitch. I can take this off, ace. Win everything back, tidy it all up. There, uh, da, da, da. Just always think about what you're undoing and all that kind of stuff to make sure it's not uh, not taking any backward steps or doing anything that might turn into something exciting. I don't want that. We like boring when it comes to self rescue stuff. There's enough excitement going on already. Clear that up. Okay, well, what can I do now? Well, actually, I can stop leaning on that because, uh, you know, I don't need to be. Everything's on there. That's my new PowerPoint. So if I want to stay safe, improvise that lanyard again. I haven't got an actual lanyard on me. I just don't really carry one for sort of trad climbing. Get that knot through there. There we go. Uh, I'm going to clip into one of these points in a second. So I'll just shorten that sling a little bit so we're always staying Nice and snug on slings. Getting into the shelf again. I've, I've only gone up there to keep it a bit clearer. There's a lot going on for me at the moment, so I'm trying to keep things as clear and simple as possible. Right, so I'm on my lanyard. I can actually come out of all of this original belay now and tidy that up. Sometimes there'll be a bit of, you know, shaking stuff around a bit to, you know, because that's now really weighted, so it might be tricky for me to get these carabiners out, but I want to because I might need them again in a minute for whatever's coming next, all right? So tidy everything up and get back to a simpler setup as you possibly can. Okay, we're good, we're good. I can untie from this. It's not going to go anywhere because it's all tied in. I can't possibly drop it. And there we go. So that was in reach set up with a sling escaping the system in reach set up being tied in with the rope, escaping the system. Really similar and you end up with the same thing. Quite a lot going on there, isn't there, if you haven't done it before. So it's absolutely well worth the practice. Again, you can do it on banisters and stuff, and it's a little bit tricky if it's tied to a chair and not a, an actual human being. Uh, if you've got someone with you, great, put, put uh, a harness on them and, and tie them in. As and when we can get to the crags again, it's really good to practice this, you know, low down, make sure your gear is like really flipping good and everything. And uh, yeah, you can practice it virtually at ground level. And actually you can practice it just by dangling a rucksack off a cliff as well. It doesn't have to be the jeopardy of, a, of your mate hanging off or anything. 
but just be really clear and simple. And if you are dangling someone off, maybe think about having them on a separate backup rope or something completely out of the system just to, to keep them as safe as safe can be, all right? There's gonna be more videos in this series um, of escaping the system and they are gonna get more complicated, but they can't just build on these skills. This is the base bit now. So we've tied off a belay plate, we've tied off an Italian hitch, we've used French prussics to bypass all the belay and everything, and we've got ourselves out of the system. So they do get progressively a bit harder. And remember, we haven't looked at sort of what to do next. How are you gonna go and help your friend? But like I say, that's, that's for another video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that's been of interest. As usual, fire away with any questions uh, and then comments and what have you. Um, click the subscribe button, click the like button, find us on Insta, find us on Facebook, um, check out the website, all that jazz. Uh, more videos coming along very soon.